Good morning, brothers and sisters. My name is Jessica Knapp, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak to you today. The stake presidency has asked me to focus my thoughts today on a talk recently given by our prophet, President Nelson, titled Choices for Eternity. President Nelson emphasizes the importance of absolute truth. Learning truth from error is an essential element in our journey to return to our Heavenly Father. A few years ago, my family was in the Amazon in South America. The conditions in the Amazon are hard to describe to do it justice. While it's definitely amazing, it was extremely hot and unbearably humid. We had no air conditioner and basically no electricity except for a light powered by a stationary bike. The heat was so much that we decided we'd rather take our chances swimming in the river. We stayed in a bamboo house, which came with mosquito nets and river water for the shower, and our welcoming committee consisted of anacondas, boa constrictors, and howler monkeys. So it was interesting. <laughs> We went on a night hike straight out from camp into the jungle where all the scary bug-like creatures come out. There were spiders and frogs and scorpions and they were all venomous and deadly. We even saw a tarantula the size of my dad's hand and my dad has some pretty fat hands. <laughs> um, this specific spider, it's called a goliath and it eats birds. So hopefully that puts into perspective what we were dealing with. Um, after we got back from our hike, it was time for us to go to sleep. We got into our beds and we were just laying there sweating to death. And on top of all this heat, you're listening to all the scary sounds of the night. So we just, there was like howling and croaking and screeching and growling and it was just everywhere and it was very overwhelming. I finally was able to fall asleep, but then I woke up at about two in the morning. I knew my mom was awake too. And as I lay there in my bed trying to sleep, um, I was just kind of freaking out because there's just all these sounds and it was very, like I said, overwhelming. Um, but then I started to hear this sound. It was different from all the other sounds. It was just unnatural and consistent, and it was honestly like a croak and a growl had had a baby. Um, so yeah, it's kind of hard to describe, but it was definitely not like the other sounds. The problem was I knew that this was coming from inside our room. And I was probably a lot more scared than I normally would have been, but after going on a night hike in the Amazon, I was terrified. I lay there in the dark, deciding whether or not I should stay silent or scream. Finally, I got up the courage to say, Mom, Mom, it's in our room. Without hesitation, my mom said, It's just your dad. He's snoring. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes what we perceive to be the truth is entirely different from what the truth really is. However, by going to reliable sources, in this case, my mom, we're able to gain more perspective and discover what the actual truth is. In his talk, President Nelson says that this life is the time that we get to decide what kind of life we want to live forever. He discusses three fundamental truths that will help us prepare our future course. One, know the truth about who you are. Two, know the truth about what Heavenly Father and His Son have offered you. And three, know the truth related to your conversion. President Nelson encourages us to ask ourselves, who are you? And I'll ask, what labels do we assign to ourselves when answering this question, who are you? Labels have become so prominent in our society that sometimes we'll skip over the individual just to cram them into the box we perceive they belong in. I have an uncle that has same gender attraction. When you hear me mention that, what label might you assign him, LGBTQ? And with that label, do you also assign him the attitudes, behaviors, beliefs, and lifestyle that are often associated with those labels? Do you leave him any room for his own individuality or beliefs, despite your prejudices? A few years ago, he returned to Spain, the country of his mission, where he planned to attend the world's largest gay pride parade in Madrid. After the first day of the event, he was a bit disheartened and left Spain for Italy. He told us that the attitudes displayed at the event were not reflective of his own and that those were not his people, his words. As members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, our history has its own experience with labels. For the last 200 years, the label Mormons has meant different things to different groups of people. Some immediately think of plural marriage. Others think of missionaries with white shirts and tags all having the same first name. Some think of a group of people with honesty and integrity. How would each of us describe a Mormon? The prophet has asked us to self-identify as members of the Church of Jesus Christ and not as Mormons. Just as there are misconceptions oftentimes given to Latter-day Saints, 
we should remember that some labels don't tell the whole story. Society may assign labels, but we need to first allow the individual to live up to the divine labels God has given them. But what are those labels? What is our true identity? Let me ask us again, who are you? The answer we should all have first and foremost is, I am a child of God, I am a child of the covenant, and I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. No title or description should ever replace or take priority over these three divine labels. Any identifier that is not compatible with these three labels will ultimately let us down. In the family, a proclamation to the world, it says, all human beings, male and female, are created in the image of God. Each is a beloved spirit, son or daughter of heavenly parents, and as such, each has a divine nature and destiny. Gender is an essential characteristic of an individual pre-mortal, mortal, and eternal identity and purpose. In Mosiah 18, verses 8 and 9, it reads, And it came to pass that he said unto them, Behold, here are the waters of Mormon, for thus they were called. And now, as ye are desirous to come unto the fold of God, and to be called his people, and are willing to bear one another's burdens, that they may be light. Yea, and are willing to mourn with those that mourn, yea, and comfort those that stand in need of comfort, and to stand as witnesses of God at all times and in all things and in all places that ye may be in, even until death, that ye may be redeemed of God and be numbered with those of the first resurrection, that ye may have eternal life. Like my uncle, the people of Alma decided to accept these three absolute truths. I am a child of God. I am a child of the covenant. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. This summer, I had the opportunity to go to Africa for three weeks to build a school. This was a unique experience for me because I was far from home and had no cell phone and no social media. I was so removed from my normal life and all my energy was focused on serving the people of Blantyre. We also spent time having devotionals, personal scripture studies, going on splits with the missionaries, and I spent a lot of time studying and pondering my patriarchal blessing. Through that experience, my relationship with Heavenly Father as his spiritual daughter was significantly strengthened, and I came to know myself better. I am a member of Timfew Student Government. I am a seminary student. I am a soccer player. And one of my current labels for all you boys out there is I'm single and available. <laughs> <laughs> when I moved to other phases of my life, like my mission, and shed these labels, the divine labels God has given, with, given me will remain, and they will remain with me through eternity, long after I've played my last soccer game. I have played soccer at Timview since I was a freshman. My sophomore year, I was team captain. My junior year, I had to sit out with a torn MCL, and going into my senior year just two weeks ago, I was cut from tryouts. It has been a disappointment to say the least, and I may be feeling a little bit of FOMO. I can tell you it would be easy to trap myself in pity and feel sorry for myself, but through experiences like the ones I've had in Africa, as well as through experiences like going to the temple, studying my scriptures, and serving others, I have been able to build up a relationship with God, and how grateful I am that I have that relationship to lean on, and know that whether or not I make the soccer team will not determine if I gain exaltation. It's how I react and respond to these trials that, the that determine the kind of person I become. And although it's sad I didn't make the team this year, I know that I know that I can move forward with happiness and with confidence because I have Heavenly Father on my side and knowing that I am his child and a disciple of Jesus Christ gives me a positive and bright outlook on my future. Rather than turning to God for comfort and help, unfortunately many turn away and lead themselves down a path of destruction. Our life on earth is like a tryout for eternal glory. As President Nelson says, with the potential to reach the celestial kingdom, the ultimate FOMO would be to miss out on that. He also says, if any label replaces your most important identifiers, the results can be spiritually suffocating. The adversary rejoices in labels because they divide us and restrict the way we think about ourselves and each other. We all are God's children and we all belong here. I have a testimony that if we accept these truths, Heavenly Father will no doubt help us return to him. Quoting President Nelson, God knows all and he sees all. In all of eternity, no one will ever know you or care about you more than he does. No one will ever be closer to you than he is. Through Jesus Christ's atonement, he overcame all the world. He will guide, preserve, and protect you. He will heal your broken heart and comfort you in your distress. He will give you access to his power, and he will make the impossible in your life possible. 
Knowing that truth is what has helped me overcome my disappointments and trials, and I know that Heavenly Father is with me. Through these experiences, like going to girls' camp, serving others, studying my patriarchal blessing, I have been able to come to know the truth about myself through God's eyes, and I have come closer to him as I felt his love and strengthened our relationship. I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.